The backlash after the killing of an endangered silverback gorilla named Harambe at the Cincinnati Zoo. The animal can be seen on video grabbing and dragging a little boy who somehow got into the gorilla enclosure. Zoo officials intervened to protect the child. Tonight, the boy's mother under investigation, and many are now asking, did Harambe have to die? Here's ABC's Alex Perez. The images jaw-dropping, a 450-pound gorilla dragging around a three-year-old boy like a rag doll. And tonight, a viral mix of outrage and mourning focused on this 17-year-old endangered silverback gorilla, Harambe, whose death at the hands of Cincinnati Zoo officials has caused a firestorm of backlash. Harambe lived his life in captivity, and he died through no fault of his own. I'm sorry, you know, when you have animals, everything should be shot. And there should not be a way for a kid to climb up and over, slide in and under. There just should not be a way. That child's life was in danger. Second guessers don't understand that you can't take a risk with a silverback. Many online commenters are placing the blame for the majestic animal's death squarely on the boy's parents. The scene unfolding on Saturday, 10 minutes of desperate horror. The boy's mother helpless from above. Authorities say the child climbed over the three-foot barrier and made his way through wires and bushes before plunging 15 feet into the moat. This video from 2014 shows the three-foot high railing that separates the crowd from the exhibit. And a three-year-old child has fallen into the gorilla cage. Come here, come here. Watch the gorilla towering over the child. Suddenly, onlookers scream as the boy is grabbed and dragged through the water. This child was being dragged around. His head was banging on concrete. This was not a gentle thing. Well, it was just screaming. Um, the, I heard the kid crying. I think the gorilla was reacting to everybody's panic, everybody else screaming. At one point, the primate stops and appears to hold the child's hand, later propping the boy up from behind and eventually dragging him all the way to the other side of the enclosure. He then went around the corner, and that's when everybody got there and started ev evacuating, telling people they needed to get out of the area. There's a zoo worker. It's what you don't see here, an off-camera decision being made by zoo officials that ends it. A loud bang. Uh, you could tell it was a high high-powered rifle. My heart sank. Um, I knew at that moment what had happened. With the small boy between his legs, Harambe the gorilla, who celebrated his 17th birthday on Friday, is dead. The boy pulled out safe. The zoo defending his decision not to use a tranquilizer, which officials say would have taken too long. In the real world, you make difficult calls. I'm proud of our team that handled it, and I'm proud of our team that's handled everything since. The child was immediately rushed to the hospital, reportedly with a concussion. He's now safe and back home with his family. The horrific ordeal over, but the backlash just beginning. I was heartbroken. Even talking to you guys right now, I'm almost ready to break out in tears. Today, zoo staffers are seen working on the enclosure as vigils are held for the fallen gorilla nicknamed Handsome Harambe. We're here just to uh, give you know, remember this, this animal that, that died. And uh, you know, our hope is that through his death, there'll be more of an awareness and perhaps something like this won't happen again. Online, reaction to Harambe's death was swift and immediate. Celebrities like Ricky Gervais weighing in, tweeting that some gorillas make better parents than people. D.L. Hughley weighing in, comparing the boys sneaking away to being left in a hot car. The gorilla's death making headlines on The View today. If it were my child, I'd have to go in the thing there too. Mm. I would maybe rally everybody, let's go and go I in just, there and I save that should, kid. There yeah, should I never do. be a way, even if a kid creepy crawls away from you. There should never be a way for, for a child to get in there. To get in there. Well, the <laughs> this melee almost reminiscent of the internet-fueled firestorm over the 2015 death of Cecil DeLion at the hands of an American trophy hunter, Justice for Cecil. which spurred a massive public shaming. <laughs> but animal experts and officials from other zoos saying the difficult situation was handled correctly. Unfortunately, when we're talking about uh, a large uh, silverback uh, that is uh, showing aggression, um, the, there was no other decision. Noting that while tragic for the animal, a child's life was at stake. I'll tell you right now, I'll bet my life right now, if I had to, that that child would not be here today.
and you would not want to be seeing this on any TV show. As of tonight, the only word from the boy's parents, a now deleted Facebook post, where his mother wrote, as a society, we are quick to judge how a parent could take their eyes off their child, and if anyone knows me, I keep a tight watch on my kids. Accidents happen, but I am thankful that the right people were in the right place today. I think the boy's parents are taking the bulk of the blame for this because it's an easy target. This is a sad, terrible thing that happened. There aren't easy answers. There weren't easy answers at the time that they decided to pull the trigger. Alyssa Strauss is a Brooklyn mom. She wrote this post on Slate.com after being disgusted by what she sees as outsized parental backlash. Even the most vigilant parents are at risk of losing their children now and then when they're out in public with their kids. I think what this case shows us is that there's no right amount of parenting. If you do too much parenting, you're criticized. If you do too little parenting, you're criticized. Really, parents can't win. Some are pointing to this video from 1996, questioning why zoo officials felt they had to kill Harambe instead of merely sedating him. You see a gorilla carrying an injured boy who had fallen into an enclosure to zookeepers for help, showing that gorillas aren't always a danger to humans. There's way too many ifs here. It's a no-win situation, what I'm telling people. It's what you a no-win situation. But there are many examples of zoo encounters gone tragically wrong. Like in 2007, when a 350-pound Siberian tiger named Tatiana got out of her habitat at the San Francisco Zoo. The tiger immediately killed the 17-year-old Carlos Sousa Jr. and injured two of his friends. Just last month, this woman nearly risked her life trying to grab a fallen hat from a tiger pen at the Toronto Zoo. Thankfully, neither woman nor animal was hurt. From inside a cage, it's easy to forget the sheer power of these beasts. In 2013, ABC's Dan Harris traveled to Central Africa to see silverback gorillas like Harambe up close. It's the dominant male. Of it's the, the dominant male. Angelique Todd is a wildlife researcher who has dedicated her life to these endangered animals, but she's quick to remind us that they are wild and unpredictable. Here he comes. I think it's very hard also for you to imagine how aggressive they can be. You know, if that male wants to go for us now, I mean, he's got huge teeth and uh, he's extremely strong, you know, and he could just kill you. For Todd, a delicate dance between friend and foe. But far from Africa and an Ohio zoo, so many are turning out to mourn and protest the death of this magnificent beast. Police say they are still reviewing the facts and circumstances that led to the incident. The zoo tonight saying they are investigating what changes need to be made to stop such a tragedy from happening again. From Nightline, I'm Alex Perez in Cincinnati.